Hello, how are you doing? Welcome to my channel, Chasing Ghost. My name's Tara Smith, and I'm late for work as usual. <laughs> so, <laughs> I had to grab my stuff for work and head on in. And I may be able to get gloves soon. I don't know. I, look at that. Look at it. Any gloves? <laughs> Kickstand. Lift it. It's like a 30% chance of rain, so my guess is it's going to rain on me on my way home. But right now I'm going to work. I got a haul ass when I get there. Got my wallet. It's not falling out. It's almost like you got a checklist when you take off. You know? Not anything necessarily for safety or any of that, which you should probably have a safety checklist. I'm sure there's one somewhere and you got like your tea clocks and all that stuff that everyone forgets about as soon as they leave the um, <laughs> class. But it's more like, is my kickstand up? Is my wallet in my pocket? <laughs> it, it's that sort of thing. You know. Oh, I wish I had a insert for my visor so it did not fall. We're saying like November. At this point, I don't give a fuck about the money. I'm just gonna fuck with them until they send it. I don't know. Storm, debris, drop off. I didn't know we had a drop off. I need to check into that. Everybody got shit piled in their yards. It's just like, what do I do? I mean, we've all got pickups, but I mean, that pretty jacked up four-wheel drive four. Do you really want to get a scratch on it hauling limbs? You know? Of course not. And some dude with an old truck that's also already scratched to shit in half, rusty, he's gonna be hauling everybody's limbs off. Here we go. I just got to get to work and my headlights come on my truck. Got a load today. Got a load at 6 a.m. I'm kind of running late. It's already like what, 3? And yeah, it's like 3 something. 3.27, 3.30. Can't read it exactly. But I'm gonna go pick up a trailer. Make sure it's clean and dry. And I know the place that I'm going, I hadn't been there in a while. So. I'm going to have to watch their safety video. And this is one of the things that I think should be, um, what do they call that? Uh, standardized. Where you just got one video you got to watch. I mean, at, at least per company it should be standardized. You shouldn't have to have a new card for every Dow facility you go to. I, I've got one of those old books that, um, hold on. <sighs> Too many cough drops. I've been sick. I've, I've been sick for like months. I'm dying. But, um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. 
remember when everybody had business cards? When you had that big book for business cards? Well, I have one of those. It does not have business cards, it has safety cards from all these plants and stuff. Because you gotta have their safety card, you gotta watch their safety video. It's 9.5 miles per hour, and it, it's the same shit everywhere. Yeah. It's the same shit. Should be pretty standard. <laughs> I mean, the whistles, the alarms, all that stuff should all be the same no matter where you go. Which it basically is. You know. But I have like a Pasadena Refinery Systems card. And they send you to a class all day to get that shit. So, why shouldn't something like that be good for all of the facilities? You know, I, I, here's my license, here's my Twit card, here's my safety card. I had a lady freak out one day, like when I first got my carry license. And back then, if, if you think it looks like a driver's license now, Oh my god, it looked like a driver's license then. And I just got it, and I accidentally handed her my carry card. Oh my god, she freaked out. And my soul's hanging off my boot. That was a little slippage. Feels nice and cool though. It's like 78, 80 degrees. 85% humidity. I'm kind of chilly. I'm gonna hop in a truck that the AC don't fucking work. It'll work when you're parked. Going down the road, I think I think it's that boot thing. It's not really a boot, there's a boot attached to that big plate. But I think all the heat from the motor and all that's blowing up through there with the wind and the hot air. And once it gets up in the 90s, you just have no AC in that truck. And it's better than the old truck that just didn't have AC. The fan motor would just go out. And you have nothing. And at least when you're parked, like when you're up in these plants, you have some AC in the truck. Going down the road, you can roll down the window. You can do something. You can't do. Sh you can't do nothing in those plants. And you can't just go walking around doing willy nilly whatever. So that is what it is. You gotta stay with your truck, stay ready to move your truck, stay in your truck. The place I'm going today, you can't stay in your truck if you're loading. They take you out when they put you in a little building by yourself so you can load. For your protection. But they burnt down pretty famously a few years ago. Same product as loading. That was a truck. Made national news. What we do for money. What we risk. Our lives, our health. I've been going back for like death certificates of, you know, family line. You know, the different cancers and stuff they died from and diseases and like on the one side of the family it's a lot of lung disease, pulmonary disease kind of stuff, but they're coal miners. You know, so it's like all this lung stuff. Or they were coal miners. The 
got out of the mines we started driving a truck. On the other side, like my great grandfather, he died of tuberculosis. You don't really think of people dying of tuberculosis. But, I mean, it, he was a doc. That side of the family is like doctors and ship captains and stuff like that. They got many. I have none. And, um, he got tuberculosis in World War One, And, of course, that came home with him and he died. He got it working on, you know, treating the troops. He served in World War One. His obituary even shows, you know, like, you know, the war still killed him X amount of years later after he came home and it explains about getting tuberculosis while he was over there in Europe treating the troops. I mean, he could have got the Spanish flu, which was going around at the time too. You know, of all the things that could kill you. Artillery, shell, gas, the Spanish flu. <sighs> All kinds of stuff. I got to crack my visor. So I can't see shit. There we go. The his son um <laughs> basically drank himself to death and you know, drinking drugs. He was a uh, he was at Normandy. He was wounded in the Battle of the Bulge. And he was in Korea. And my other grandfather was a Korean vet. That grandfather was too young for World War II, just a little bit, all his brothers served. But both of them were like raging alcoholics and apparently a lot of those guys were alcoholics. You know, that Forgotten War, Korea. Only thing anybody remembers of it is MASH. Well, both of them were over there. And they were but they The alcoholism and stuff killed the one. The other would have drank himself to death, but he got cleaned up off the alcohol and switched to the pills that his doctor gave him. And I have an aunt, kind of the same thing, and her doctor went to jail because, you know, they were just giving out all these pills to old people, keeping them high as fuck. And she said, ain't nothing wrong with a man that would keep me happy for that happy for that long. She was mad they put her doctor in jail. And of course, my father. Um man did heroin since Vietnam. He was a Vietnam vet. And, um, alcoholic and heroin addict. Seems to be a familiar combination. And he'd go for the booze, the needle, the booze, the needle, and VA and help him get cleaned up and all that stuff. And, You know, he lasts until 2016, and of course, stints in prison and all that probably helps somewhat extend his life, but it's not like he can't get drugs in prison, you know? Healthcare is another thing. If you think you're going to go to prison, they're going to cure all your ailments. Boy, do you have another thing coming, because that ain't how it works. They're not even timely on the stuff they have to do. But, oh, I'm going to get treatment for my cancer. No, they're not. You're going to die of that cancer. You know? You'll see a doctor. Yeah, you got cancer. You're not really going to get the treatment you think you are. There's a lot of myths and stuff about that. 
you know like, oh the government gonna take care of you you go to jail they give them all this no they don't that's like people thinking you know the government's gonna pay for everything you gonna enlist and they're, they're gonna pay for all this stuff and, you know then you look at your chuck and what is all this oh I had to buy that I'm only making eight hundred dollars a month what the hell you know yeah some y'all can relate to that one <laughs> how much do these uniforms cost man <laughs> but yeah there's a lot of myths out there you know people perpetrator whatever the word is or they think people are getting a whole bunch of free stuff they ain't getting and what free stuff you are getting they're doing everything in the world to keep you from getting you know so but anyways I've been looking at those death certificates and, you know the different kind of cancers kind of you know thinking like a family health history sort of thing my mom's mother died of breast cancer and that's so scary to me and hers it spread to the bone and to the lung pretty bad. Her and her friend both had breast cancer at the same time. Old lady, she used to sit on the front porch with smoking cigarettes and drinking coffee. They were both dying of cancer at the same time. One just died a few months before the other. Actually, I think it was close to a year before the other. I like old ladies, uh, Especially when they get to the point where they just don't give a damn and will tell you their honest opinion. Oh, they're fun. That unabridged opinion of 70 years of basically, fuck you, I don't give a damn. That's the opinion you need. I miss my grandma. I miss a lot of people at this point. Really missing that crew that was supposed to fix this road. Good lord. to stay off the worst of it I think some mornings it's worse I don't know maybe the temperature has an effect or how recently a trains went by I wonder does it shake the ground does it mess it up hello mr. train why is it in neutral my foot went up why is it still in neutral has that ever happened to you? Might be because of my soul coming off my boot. I don't know. But I gotta get my boots resold. Really need to be wearing more gear. I'm not one of them people that's like, oh, you can't make me and all that stuff. Oh no. If I lived someplace that was cooler, I'd be wearing a lot more gear. It, well, y'all notice, like, in the wintertime, when we get down in the frigid, you know, depths of the winter and it's like 40, 50 degrees, <laughs> I'm wearing, you know, a lot more leather and stuff
the other thing about a motorcycle, you know, we're we'll talk about the smells and all that. That's never really bothered me. I grew up on a farm. The smells don't necessarily bother me. Unless it's actually something that's nauseating, you know. Then it's, you know, nauseating. You know, I, I got a really good sense of smell. It's not that. It's just like, oh, that sinks and move on. Farm life will do that to you. But you feel every little <laughs> imperfection in the road. Every little groove, every little everything that you don't care about in a car. You definitely feel it on a bike. 100%. Check my back. There it is. Oh. helping me out because we were hit by the hurricane and all that so for as much as I bitch about like HDFS they're not bad you know they're like okay yeah we'll, we'll push like two notes for you help you out because I lost work I lost money I got repairs to do on my house I lost all my food I'm already hurting so HDFS I mean, they still got that title to my soul, you know, I, I haven't bought it back yet, but I'm like an indentured servant, whatever you want to call it. I'm like, ah, oh, that light's bright. Well, I only got one. And something's telling me to leave it up there. So I'll leave it up there. Listen to your internal voice. Mine is crazy. She's a crazy bitch and she's running around with scissors. But it's okay. I have a gun. I'm not worried about the scissors. Another reason you can't take those curves so fast, huh? That'd be nice. It's, it's not like you're on a track, you know? I think that messes a lot of people up too. You see them in the videos and stuff. And I may fall victim to it one day myself. Never get too cocky. But, you know, that's not smooth road you take a look at no it's not smooth you're trying to do all that sliding shit like you're on a track coming around leaning over and all that and all of a sudden your wheel ain't touching the ground for a second well that's not good not in any way is that good neither cows and hogs and deer and raccoons and squirrels I think that was Coon I hit that one day. Basically hit it with my foot. I hope he's okay. Or she. I like raccoons. Raccoons are like everybody's drunk uncle if your drunk uncle is a cat and had thumbs. They're pretty cool. I always imagine them with like a Cajun, you know, Cajun accent kind of thing. Who knows, around here they might. Louisiana ain't that far to my left. Only real 
difference is is it a bio or a bayou? You know? And that's kind of the difference here. Why do there have to be people? They're aiming in like my direction. with persons, you know, it's the people I have a problem with. Who has it said that? George Carlin, I think. Who knew that man would be like a prophet? You know, screw that French guy that wrote all those poems and prophecies or whatever. Yeah, just listen to Carlin. Granted, he's probably a lot more left than I am. I used to be what would be, you know, I think 30 years ago I would have been a liberal. I think about the turn of the century I'd have probably been right of center. Not that my views change that much, it's the political spectrum move. You know? But I'm still all stuck on I don't have to agree with what you say, but I'll fight for your right to say it kind of thing. And now apparently we live in a world of cancel culture and that view that used to be like the popular liberal view is now a rabid far-right conservative. And it doesn't help that I'm a gun nut, you know, so. They want to call everybody a Nazi, and I find that offensive. Call anyone on the left or the right right now a Nazi. I can find family surnames in the Holocaust victims list for like Auschwitz. You know. Have you ever seen the movie Come and See? I have family that lives through that. So yeah. Like real Nazis. The ones that would put your whole town in a building, light fire to it, and tell you, you could leave, but the children have to stay. Those guys. The ones that wanted to eradicate the Jews and nearly eradicate my people. The only real difference is they wanted to keep about 15-20% of us around for a slave class. A literal slave class. I mean the word, word slave came from our name. So I guess I see the point there. They still filled a lot of ditches and stuff with us there. So I kind of found that offense. Oh, Trump's a Nazi. Oh, Obama's a Nazi. Uh, I don't even think anybody would say Biden's a Nazi. He didn't have enough brain left in his head. He's not in anything. It's like mush. Well, no, no. I, I may not agree with their politics, but eh, not Nazis. That's a little different thing. But I will catch y'all later. Y'all see those chemical plants ahead of me. That means I got money ahead of me. I'm about to hop in a truck and haul ass. Haul ass both hands.
you don't get that think about when you're little running from your mom because she got a belt in her hand you got both hands on it, on your ass sheets that's what my mama used to say she said haul ass both hands okay but anyways i will catch y'all later adios adios sayonara ciao nashla y'all are awesome i'll catch you later this is you bye